Have you heard about this guy who is uh, soliciting money to help uh, make a movie? Yeah, makeamoviehappen.com. His, uh, his name is Stuart Asher. I'm sorry, Stuart. How are you? Uh, good morning. Uh, where Are you in L.A.? I am in Los Angeles. Oh, my God. What are you doing up so early? Yeah, well, you know, my duty to the people. You yeah, know. right. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at your picture right next to Roger Ebert. You are basically... Uh, you're, you're trying to make a movie. That's right. And so you're asking people... Now, I'm, so you're, you're, you've got a, a website called what? Makeamoviehappen.com? Okay, so basically what we did was I figured, you know, if my Uncle Spielberg would finally admit to me being his nephew, things would be easy. Right. You know? <laughs> But he won't. So no. until that happens, I had to find a way to make my movie happen. So I had this brilliant idea of coming up with a website called makeamoviehappen.com where people can go and they could, you know, look at my past work, they could read all the press about me, see my music videos and commercials, and most importantly, watch, read about the movie that I'm trying to make. And if they like what they see, they can actually help make my movie happen and donate via credit card or PayPal any amount of money, it could be $10, could be $100,000, and you get your name in the credits. Now, if, if, if I give you a whole lot of money, do I get a piece of the action? Well, um, I guess that all depends. Um, as, through the website, no. If you actually want to invest in the movie, that's something we could talk on the side. Okay, so um, um, let's see, your, your target is $2 million. Yes. Yeah. And uh, how much have you made so far? Well, we've made about fifty-five thousand dollars in three and a half weeks. Oh wow! So that's pretty good. You're thinking that's good, huh? Well, I'm thinking that's pretty good. I mean, basically, all I did was send out an e email to every single person I know, just explaining, look, you know, here's my past work, here's what I've done, you know, e please just, just whether you donate or not. Send it to everybody you know and tell them to send it to everybody they know. And I wanted to start this viral, you know, funded by the people, for the people type of thing. Yeah, so, well, well, what have you done? This isn't like, uh, you haven't, what, made movies in the valley, have you, or anything? <laughs> None that I'd admit to there. Okay, all right. So what have um, you done? No, um, well, I had a short film, and that's, that's what um, people can read about also on the site. But everyone's had a short film. But this one was a little different um, because I did it in college at Boston University and went to the Sundance Film Festival um, where I, which is a whole other story in itself, got Roger Ebert to become a big fan of it, um, and he pretty much launched my career. Which film was this? This was a short film called Bobby Loves Mangoes, nothing to do with the valley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so basically what happened was I was in Sundance, and, you know, even when you're there, you can't even get anyone to watch your film. And I couldn't afford to go, so I was part of the volunteer program, which is great. You know, they fly you there, you, you, they put you up for the week, you tear tickets and try and see as many movies and meet as many Hollywood industry people as you can. Yeah. And so there I was, straight out of college, tearing tickets, and um, I went to the opening night festival, the film festival, and who did I see? Roger Ebert. And it was this big press line. People were asking him what he thought of the opening night film. And maybe I should have waited. Maybe I shouldn't. But I had my tape with me, and I walked right up in the middle of his interview. And I was like, Mr. Ebert, you've got to watch this tape. This is the best film you'll ever see. And he was kind of like, the Chicago Times doesn't fly me here to watch home videos. So, yeah, right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, he was a jerk. Yeah, he wasn't very nice. Um, and I don't. I, at the time, I, that's exactly what I said. I kind of called him a beep beep, and um, he heard me, and he was like, "Wait, you think I'm a beep beep?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, you know, you could have said it nicer, man. You know." And he was basically like, "I'm sorry, you know, you're the icing on the cake. Everybody comes over and accosts me all the time." And and I'm like, "Great, no worries. Out of guilt, now you have to watch my film." And he was pretty much like, "Look, I really can't unless it's." showing on, this, on a screen somewhere. It's a short film, you know? Right. Where's right. anyone going to see it? Three days later, he came into the theater I was working at. Sure enough, there was, a, there was a big screen TV in the bar that he was waiting for his screening to start. Oh, and I guess we know so, what you played. There we go. So no I, kidding. I went to the manager of the bar, and I was like, look, here's 10 bucks. Can you please put this on your VCR? And he was like, no problem. My film came on. He turned around, he started watching it. I said, Mr. Ebert, I brought my film to you. 
And he watched it and loved it and was like, wait a second, were you the guy who called me a whatever, you know, a beep last yesterday, two days ago? And I was like, actually, yeah, sorry about that. And he, he said, this is a great story. I have to write an article about this. And he wrote actually three articles. And uh, it printed in, you know, his 600 syndications across the country, you know, and pretty much got behind me and said, you know, this guy's good. So... Well, you should have the $2 million with that kind of publicity. I know, that's what I thought, but this was, you know, a couple years ah, ago. Okay. And, again, straight out of school, I, you know, the hardest thing is to get that first feature. So, anyway, what is the movie you're making? What, do you, what, is, what is the plot like? Give us 20 seconds. Well, the 20-second pitch is this. 20-second um, pitch. Now. Here's how it goes. Yeah, it's so L.A. Yeah, right. <laughs> here's how it goes. Basically, um, it's entitled Abducted. And it starts in the 70s with these two 12-year-old boys, Stevie and Max. They're best friends, but they're having trouble with their family lives, and they want to run away. And something goes wrong when they meet on the beach at night, and one of the boys, Stevie, is swept out to sea and disappears. And his body's never found. The other boy, Max, is blamed for it, and he's disheartened. And his childhood pretty much ends. Yeah. Then we come back in. That's like the first 10 minutes of the movie. So we got a stand-by-me thing going here. Right. Then yeah, we right. come back in today, 2006, and Max is all grown up, yeah. and hopefully Matt Dillon or Tom Cruise or someone. Yeah. And um, he never really got over the death of his best friend, and we see his family life is kind of out of whack. You know, he's bad. He's not a good father to his 12-year-old that, that, that is bringing back all these memories. He's not a good husband that he's sort of estranged from now. He's in the middle of a separation from his wife. And he's like this career-driven guy when suddenly Stevie, his best friend, comes back. Oh, my God! And he's not only still alive, he's still 12 years old. Oh, so cool. now we so okay, so okay. we got a little fantasy science fiction. Who do we want to get? I'm trying to figure out who do we want to get into. into the, first of all, we have to have Julia Roberts. <laughs> of course, it's, it's, On a two million dollar budget. I'm sure we can afford. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> you might be able to get Pam Dauber. <laughs> there you go. Who else? Who do you want? Who who's the ultimate central casting? Who do you want to? I mean, ideally, ideally, I would I would absolutely love like a Christian Bale. Right. Or you know a Matt Dillon, right. you know, or an Ed Norton, mm -hmm. you know, to play this part. No, oh, this guy who just did Superman, he might be available. Yeah, he's a little young though. He has to kind ah. of be like thirty-five, forty. And he's like twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't have George Clooney. He's too old. Yeah, and he's too. The problem is. He's too expensive. It all depends on how many of your listeners actually go to makeamoviehappen.com and give me, like, a couple bucks. Listen, hey, listen, this really sounds great. Don, do you have anything you want to throw in here on this plot? You're pretty good at Well, you, if you go to makeamoviehappen.com, you can get a synopsis of the script. Yeah. Uh, you, can get, you can see some storyboards. You can see the team involved with it. Uh, and you just make your own. You make your own judgment. You look at us as do I. Do I want to see this on the screen? I'm in because, because if you don't give up enough money, you'll never see oh it. Oh my God! I'm in. You want this to be on big screen. You don't want this for a made for TV. You don't want this on Lifetime, do you? Exactly. All I mean, right. The idea is there are so many movies out there, and many people complain about these huge Hollywood movies and how they're unsatisfying and yeah. they're a fortune. And and you know, here's a chance that actually has a good message. And they don't do that anymore. Here's a good film that will actually inspire people to um, make a difference. So, I'm, so I'm no, tears no, no explosions, no gratuitous sex. No explosions or gratuitous sex. I'm out. In the film. All right. Stuart Asher, thanks a lot, man. Thank you, guys. Okay.